Cutblock hit a million likes on Facebook. That metric is something to celebrate, but it is bittersweet. The growth of Cutblock on Facebook and across other outlets is due to many things. The timeliness of this conversation, the caliber of those involved, the perverse incentives that fuel the police state, and technology as disseminator of information. You might assume that I hope to see the number of likes on Coplock's Facebook page rise to 2 million or to 10 million or more, but ultimately, the true gauge of effectiveness will be when the decentralized project no longer has to exist. Certainly, since Coplock.org was launched almost five years ago, more individuals, many who may have never heard of the site, recognize the need to always film the police and to focus attention on those who aggress. That's excellent and it's a necessary first step, but wouldn't it be preferable to live in a world where such reactive measures were not even needed? Coplock.org started as a group blog, with contributors each bringing their unique experiences and perspective to the table. But before too long, the site evolved. The sheer volume of incidents caused Coplock.org to transform into a submission-based site and resource hub. Those attributes exemplify the decentralization necessary to effect real change, which has manifest in the actions of thousands now involved. Historically, self-proclaimed rulers have monopolized the free flow of ideas. No matter the location, structure, or titles taken, those self-proclaimed rulers share one commonality, perceived legitimacy. It is costly to subjugate others via physical coercion. Control is much easier when cages are erected mentally, when access to information and ideas is constrained and monopolized. To mitigate the questioning of the status quo, self-proclaimed rulers have burned books and they have burned people. It is what happens in all regimes throughout history and is what today is unfolding in the USSA. Today, self-proclaimed rulers claim the right to regulate virtually every aspect of the lives of others and to disappear anyone deemed a threat. Realize that without fear, division, and doublespeak, self-proclaimed rulers cannot find purchase. We live at a time of exceptional potential. Anyone with an internet connection can reach billions. The ability of self-proclaimed rulers to censor, suppress truth, and manufacture misinformation is slipping. The centralized control message of corporate media, which likens police employees to authorities, is losing clout. And at some point, the Federal Reserve monopoly money, which fuels the police state, will go to its absolute value of zero. Police, as structured today, exist because an artificial paradigm that positions some as masters and others as slaves has been incessantly peddled as truth through years of mandated government school indoctrination. It's been drilled into us that if we're unhappy, we need to work within the system to change it. But allocating your time and resources to working within the apparatus created and administered by those who seek to rule you is nonsensical. The very act of seeking remedy through those prescribed avenues only feeds into the legitimacy of that failed institution. Realize that all police outfits are founded on the idea that says that some people, the police and their friends, have the right to extort from others. That idea, that bad idea, if bought into, creates a double standard. It establishes two classes of people. And so long as that bad idea is bought into, the perceived gulf will grow in size and scope. Thus, the systemic rights violations we are today confronted with, caused by those who claim to protect us, is not surprising. Realize that nothing good can stem from such a polluted foundation. A flower cannot grow from toxic waste. Basic economics, supply and demand, make clear the importance of proper incentives. No matter the good intentions cited by police, justice, protection, or accountability, it is fallacious to believe that they can ever come from a course of monopoly where so-called customers are told to pay or else. Some would say that the perpetuation of this false arrangement hinges on fear, but I would be more specific and put forth that the perpetuation of this treatable cancer hinges on ideas, and ideas have consequences. Ideas are what motivates us each to act. Bad ideas such as buying into the charade that some strangers have the right to control you, though you've never signed a contract with them, cause bad consequences. I sometimes see folks refer to Coplock as a non-profit. I want to make clear now that that's not the case. The simple act of asking another for permission gives credibility to their claim that they are your ruler. Coplock exists not to solidify such deleterious claims, but to empower. In fact, Coplock is more of an idea than anything, those who recognize the pattern of violence inflicted by police employees are encouraged to get involved in whatever capacity, save for the initiation of force, that they think most effective. It's only through the exchange of ideas and open critical thinking that we can each adopt what we think best. If you buy into the bad idea that says you don't have the right to own certain tools to defend yourself and your property, what does that make you? If you buy into the bad idea that says you don't have the freedom to alter your conscience, 
what does that make you? If you buy into the bad idea that says certain people have the right to steal from you at an annual basis each spring and for engaging in peaceful actions, what does that make you? And what kind of world does it leave for the next generation? Realize that you own yourself. You alone have the right to govern yourself. The existing paradigm positions a tiny fraction of people as rulers, allowing them to subsist off the energy of others. This, of course, is based on perceived legitimacy. Fortunately, we live at a pivotal time. Technology has empowered each of us to find information and share ideas that fundamentally question how we relate to each other. That, more than anything, fuels our liberation, and it cannot be undone. Just as it is individuals who act and are responsible for their actions, it is at the individual level, one mind at a time, where evolution happens. Some people voice the mantra, all cops are bastards, or fuck the police. Similarly, some police employees liken themselves to sheepdogs necessary to control the sheep and find comfort in the closed-off, thin blue line culture. Such paradigms are counterproductive as they create an us and a them. Ask yourself, how likely is a person to consider ideas different than their own if they are communicated with hostility? Realize that no matter their place of birth, gender, sexual orientation, or any other arbitrary factor, each person has the same rights. That law isn't created from a top-down hierarchy, but emerges from the bottom up. And that each of us has a right to pursue our happiness so long as we don't tread on another. If you seek to live in a world free from institutionalized police violence, don't be reactionary. See the institution for what it is divisive, hypocritical, and perversely incentivized, and see the individual actors for what they are, individuals like you and me, each responsible for their actions, no matter the magical legalese their friends say is applicable. Invest in yourself, find peace internally, and come at this issue from a place of love. If you realize the harm caused by granting legitimacy to an institution based on coercion and in granting double standards to its actors, change your paradigm. Stop hacking at the branches of tyranny and strike the root.